economic and social development. How exactly can they, can they do that? Yeah, I think one of the greatest challenges that we are having in this country is that we are too politicized and polarized as a nation. So one of the areas that we need to obviously look at is to try and articulate the Zimbabwean story from a much more positive um, uh, perspective rather than the ongoing kind of negative portrayal of the, the nation as some, you know, a, a state that, you know, no investment, no good thing can come out of, uh, you know, our country. So I think we need to start to reconstruct uh, the Zimbabwean story so that we can also start to have, to, have, to have confidence in ourselves. We can also start to do some, you know, venture capitals in our own, in our own country uh, and we can build confidence even in foreigners to come and do bin business with us. Mm -hmm. But even then, still, you will still have uh, impediments in order for them to achieve uh, economic and social development. How can they then pass through, besides uh, making sure that they probably speak positively the, about the country and also act positively in any effort that, uh, in any efforts that are aimed at building up the country? What are some of the imp impediments then to this venture, to the point whereby they're saying we are now involved in economic and uh, social development? That's very true, yeah. I think, like I've mentioned, that there is the issue of uh, political uh, politicization and also polarization. We also need to look at uh, areas around, you know, political will by government in as far as uh, acting on their policies is concerned. I think since independence, government has had not less than 14 uh, economic policy blueprints, all of them putting an accent on employment creation. But you realize that largely uh, not much has been done in terms of acting on these policies. So we need to build our own capacity as young people to demand from government to act on their policies. And also as young people, I think we should not allow ourselves to be used by politicians. I've seen we've done a lot of conferences, but most of our resolutions, they are too watery. They are too apologetic to government in action. So we need something that is quite robust and a bit radical to call for government at least to come to action. Mm -hmm. But right now we know that the government is also facing serious liquidity challenges. Can we say that the youth are doomed in terms of social and economic development? Surely there's some <coughs> initiative that the youth can take up in order to come to a point whereby they are also emancipated in a way. That's very true. Yes, the liquidity crunch is, uh, you know, is, is a reality in our country, but there are also certain serious areas that I think government can cut on its expenditure to try and also boost uh, local industry and improve on the welfare of young people. We don't need these expensive Mercedes Benzes. We don't need these expensive vehicles and the expenses that the government is currently incurring. Let's look local. Let's consume our own products. Let's minimize the expenditure that we do outside the country so that we at least we save on foreign currencies and do more in terms of boosting local industry. Okay, but I need to know how exactly can you be capacitated in terms of skills, in terms of knowledge? Is it enough? This, uh, or, are, are they well equipped? I think in terms of uh, the modern trends in industry, there is a huge skills gap. Uh, if you look at what is happening in our colleges, in our tertiary institutions, in our vocational training centers, there is need to match the skills gap uh, with also modern trends industry uh, in terms of, I mean, capacitating our lecturers uh, to be well versed with ICTs. And also if you look at uh, current existing ways of supporting youth, the youth fund, I think we need to expand it to enable young people to ac access uh, venture capital. And also I think there is need for skills training and transfer we see a lot of foreigners coming into the country but there is very little participation by our local young people i think government should make it mandatory that when a chinese company comes in there should be a certain quota probably 25 percent according to our youth policy of young people who are within that venture so that they can also gain experience and also skills that once the Chinese leave, we are able to do our own things. Mm -hmm. And then besides government, there are the relevant stakeholders that are also committed or maybe that have been working towards or that are supposed to be working towards youth emancipation. How committed are they to this particular cause? Yeah, I think the committed seems to, um, to be quite very evasive in light of maybe our political situation. As Zimbabweans, we don't seem to many times to be speaking with one voice. So that has caused also confusion for, to, uh, amongst those who want to, to come and work uh, in support of uh, young people. So what is your advice to the Ministry of Youth in terms of assisting uh, issues affecting... Oh, I think, yeah, I would advise the Ministry to be more involved in police coordination, coordinating the activities of young people rather than being more divisive uh, amongst the young people. I think we don't seem to be working quite very well together with the Ministry. Uh, you know, they don't seem to be working quite very well together with quite a number Why of... Why is uh, that? Um, I think it's because of also, you know, the effects of polarization and over-politicization uh, of the nation.
that we have suffered because of uh, our own uh, recent history. So I think they need to, 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 to look at that. And also, most importantly, I think the burden of uh, you know, alleviating the situation of young people should not lie entirely on the Ministry of Youth alone. They also need to, to monitor and regulate processes that are happening in other ministries, so that there is much more coordination. I think this is also identified in the Zimbabwe National Employment Policy Framework that was adopted in 2009 by Cabinet, that I think there is lack of coordination amongst these different ministries in as far as uh, you know, alleviating uh, the issues and uh, problems affecting young people is concerned. Well, thank you for coming to Good Morning Zimbabwe Youth Forum National Coordinator, Mr. Wellington Zinduri. And our Good Morning Zimbabwe takes a short break. We return right after this. We do have sports news, African news, and more coming before the end of the first hour.